Darren Woodson joining us. Woo! Hopefully, hopefully very soon, future Hall That's of Fame Darren Woodson. And, you know, Darren's a, a man from the Metroplex, so he knows about the monkeys that were stolen from the Dallas Zoo. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the, guy just, the guy just goes home, and then he goes to the – here's how he gets caught. He goes uh, to the Dallas Aquarium, and he starts talking to an employee because I don't know what reptiles he was trying to steal, but he starts thinking about, I'm going like to steal some, some reptiles from the, the, the Dallas Aquarium. Oh, and the person who's talking to him, he goes – this is the person that they've put out the picture of and then calls out like, hey, I know this guy. I don't know him, but he's yeah. talking to me, and obviously he's trying to steal something. Is that him. how he got caught? Yes. yes. He went to the Dallas <laughs> he Aquarium. He went back? No, he, oh, went, he went to, to the, the aquarium. aquarium. For aquarium. more animal stealing or mammal stealing or fish stealing. Now, as you knew it would be, our first question for you, Darren Woodson, <laughs> is oh, God. if you saw oh. somebody with two monkeys in a bag on the dart rail, would you say something? pretend not to see that person what's the move you know I, I don't know exactly what i would say i would think it'd be odd sure for two monkeys sure you know, I, but hey crazier things happen yeah des ended up having a remember right des bought a monkey oh, back yes. then so that it's not outside of the norm for someone to why they would why the hell they would yeah. buy a monkey i have no idea but anyway uh I don't know what I was. I don't think I would say anything personally to that because if you got two monkeys, do you, you? Hey, yeah. you, you know, don't know what they're you know what the hell is going to yeah. do. They're you know, a different life. They can bring an anaconda out of the bag. They can bring you know yeah. whatever it is, or out of their never mind, yeah. <laughs> never mind. That was too far, Corey. Too far. You can't say that. Kevin. I didn't. That's why I stopped. I appreciate you for that. Can you tell it's us? Kind of, kind of uh, felt like Darren led you to that point. Yeah, yeah he, he did. He did. He I got entrapped. I got entrapped by that fight. This is Mike likes it. We have the great Darren Woodson with us. Darren, as the Cowboys were making their run i decided to go back and watch a whole bunch of dallas versus san francisco mm. playoff games mm. and it led me down a little bit of a hole that i want to talk to you about i go and i watch the carolina panthers playoff game because I, I wanted to go back and go i want to see kind of when it all started going downhill oh yeah for that the dallas right. cowboys yeah. and their dynasty and that <laughs> was the game where the cowboys lose and from that point never really get back to mm -hmm. where we thought the dallas cowboys were going to be can you take us to kind of that moment against Kerry collins who I will say during that game, gained confidence. He did not look very good to start mm -hmm. that game, but mm -hmm. as the game progressed, started finding ways to complete balls. Is Can you take us to 1996 and mm, the playoffs? Long time. And kind of, it's you just. remember. It, no, it, it, the, no, try the, not to. The magic yeah. kind of goes away from that. Yeah, game. it does. But, you know, it started the year before 95. Look, I, I always say we, there were three Super Bowl chain, teams that I played on. The, the 95 team was by far the worst. I mean, we, we weren't even close to the 92. Y'all were better in 94? We were better in the 92, 93 teams okay. than we were in that last Super Bowl. And it was just, you know, personnel was different. Mindset was different. And, you know, no, this is nothing on, on Barry Switzer and the coaching staff, but we weren't being held accountable like we were yeah. years past. Like, yeah. Jimmy, there was an energy in that room. And you mess up. You're out the door, right? Yeah. So it was, there was a different energy there in 95. And I thought the team, again, personnel wasn't the same. We were going in a different direction. And you could just feel like every game was going to be a close game in 95. Never had that feeling in that 95 season, even in the Super Bowl, where you're like, oh, we're going to put them away. Yeah. Like, we're going to put these guys away. Like, Emmett's going to run the ball in the fourth quarter. We're gonna put, we didn't have that feeling. And then we get into the next year. We get into that year and lose that game against Carolina, that entire 96 season felt the same. We were yeah. up and down. We were not a good football team. I don't know how we won some of those games, and, yeah. and they were all a lot wow. of close games. But going into that game, we weren't home. We didn't have home field advantage. We're a wild card team on the road, and I'm telling you, the confidence level was not the same. Yeah, well, watching that, and I know you're a defensive guy. You're not on the offensive side, but – the second play of the game for the offense, Irving Michael Irvin, right. Yeah. And then the rest of the game, you just see Troy Aikman's frustration, and I'm watching it through television, not being on the sideline and everything. Yeah. Is he's trying to get nothing against Billy Davis or Eric Bjornsson or yeah. stuff, but it seems like everybody's running routes that he's like, where are you going? Because yeah. he's screaming and throwing his hand like, you're supposed to be going <laughs> right. that way. Right. Right. And, and you're confusing the heck out of me on where I'm supposed to be throwing the ball because nobody's running the, the proper right. routes. Right, right. And that's the thing. Okay, so we started to see, you know, players like including myself as captains we were policing the team and you can't grow that way when the players are always having to police guys and troy aikman's having to talk yeah. to the players you know that's the coach's job yeah and, and the players are to play the coaches are to coach and, and you saw it because 
Troy understood where Mike was going to be at all times. Mike goes down. Now you got guys that uh, I'm not in, in no offense to these guys, but you know they're not playing at that that Pro Bowl level. They're, those are these are second and third string guys that were that yeah. we were thrusting up to play that. And our again, our personnel was not the same. Yeah. And and as good as Troy was, as good as Emmett was in that offensive line, I mean, at sometimes you got to have playmakers make plays. You got to have the CD Lambs absolutely stand up and make a play and we didn't have those guys on the back end of that how impressive was it in the afc championship game that patrick mahomes is not only hurt but then he's down to his fourth fifth and sixth wide receiver yeah, he amazing. still does have kelsey but he's down to his backup 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 guys and he's still able to put up enough points to get to the that's Super why Bowl. you that, well, I, I always felt like for the last three or four years that he's the best quarterback in the game right because he always finds a way to elevate his game and do something spectacular. And he's going to have to do that again yeah. this, this week against Philly because Philly's pass rush is coming. But he's always been that, that guy. He's got all the capabilities. He can throw from different arm slots. He knows where everyone is in that offense. And he's basically the coach on the field. So he is the superstar at the quarterback position. He is the one when you look at the, across the NFL, you say he's the difference maker. And, he's not, and that's what we saw in that AFC championship game. Did they miss a beat? Hell no, because he is that dog. He is the guy that can get them there. And I think he's the only way, the only way they win this game is if he plays lights out because they're not, they don't match up well this game. Talking with Darren Woodson right here on 105.3 The Fan, as if you didn't already know that, is walk us through what tomorrow is going to look like for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're like we've been on this campaign for years. Have you been on this campaign? You know this. We, Look, we, every day, we, yeah. chance we get, we you guys keep people. on. Keep I was going to say we got you to the finals, but I guess you, you got did, yourself you did to a the little finals. Bit. You did so, a little bit of yeah. work. We'll give you credit. For Look, that. I, I just uh, it, it's a dream come true to be you know be a finalist. It always has yeah. been, and, and I will forever be grateful to to be in this position. Um, but it's not so much for me. It's just. I, I guess when I look at this, the position we're in right now, it's just a recognition of, of some of the guys that I played with on the defense side of the ball that never got credit. Yeah, like we never, rep, they never, we've never been represented in a way that people recognize that 92, 93, 94, 95 Cowboys defense. And Charles Haley went in, but Charles Haley came from the San Francisco 49ers and then came over to Dallas, right? Yeah. Like Deion Sanders, the same thing. He went to two multiple teams. That defense was the number one defense. Hell, we had nine turnovers in the first, in 92, in the Super Bowl victory, right? <laughs> I mean, and then, you know, it's just like that defense was special. And that's what I feel like I represent. I represent the Tony Tolberts, the Ken Nortons, the James Washingtons, the Thomas Everett's. I mean, Larry Brown, so many guys, Kevin Smith, so many guys that just never got that attention because we were always the three amigos uh, heavy, yeah. right? <laughs> it was Troy Emmett. And Mike, we and, feel the same way. And with I the thought, offensive damn, line. And, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you're like, did they play defense too? Yeah, like they play <laughs> offense and defense because we didn't play defense evidently back mm -hmm. in those days. So that's what I'm representing, man. I'm representing those guys uh, and going in. And uh, I just saw Kenny Gant walk through a minute the ago. Shark. Oh my Shark. god, we had him that's on the other dude. day. He was so awesome. Oh, man. It was yeah. so great to talk my to guys, him. man. We but we were winning championships back then. So that's I the, forgot that's how the, much he played on defense. Yeah, because I thought special. of him as just the special teams guy. Oh, and when you go good. back and you watch the 49ers yeah. games, you're like, oh wow, he was in the slot a yeah. lot of times. Oh, absolutely, man. When I first came in, uh, my first year, they didn't let me start, so they put me as a nickel guy. Well, Kenny Gant was such a damn good cover guy he covered the slot i covered the tight end on the back side and then the following year i came in and started playing more against the slot uh receiver and in my entire career i've always covered the slot receiver but gant was one of those guys that taught me how you know where my leverage was where my help was and, and i was a big guy I was 226 covering uh you know a 510 59 uh wes welker type of guy in the yeah. slot man so you know he always Mentally, he got me prepared for those moments. All right, real quick, we have, we've got a little bit of time here. You, The defense lines up where you have to – you're in the slot now with CD in front of you. How do you how do you play against CD? Yeah, man, it's, it's a tough matchup. I mean, look, everyone at – the slot position altogether, there's so much – there's so much land, right? I always say, damn, dude, you're, you're kind of you got two right, ways. Yeah. You can go across the field. There's so many ways. You always got to know where your help is. And if I'm playing against C.D. Lamb, it's the same thing. I'm going to try to press him. I'm going to try to get my hands on him because I was a big guy. Try to get my hands on him, disrupt him. 
But, damn, I'm going to look for my help. <laughs> if i got a guy in the middle of the field, I'm going to force him that way, right? But, you know, that's just how it is. You, you're not going to win those battles. And I'll say it this. Back then, we saw really good receivers. These receivers today are on a different, different. level. They're, they're on a different level. They're all Jerry Rice's. You know, yeah. every week you, you show up, <laughs> there's someone on that team, the C.D. Lambs or whoever it may be, Brown with the, with the Chase, Eagles, Jefferson, Chase, yeah. I mean, there's so many guys now that, that, that play at that level. It's just hard to, to physically match up on a down-to-down play. Well, we appreciate you yes, popping on always, with us, and obviously man. what a Mike likes it. All of the <laughs> hope and prayers and yeah, everything man, for tomorrow. It. We're everyone in the Metroplex is rooting for. Oh, I appreciate it.